when we go across a period, the ion, the first ionization energy increases, which that's the general trend. So from the start of the period to the end of the period, the general trend is that ionization energy is increasing. So the first point you need to write that in general, the first ionization energy increases across a period because you can see from hydrogen to helium ionization in energy increases from lithium to neon ionization energy increases and from sodium we start with the third period so this is completely this is something completely different now if you see the, the so this general trend is because as we go across a period nuclear charge increases however atomic radius is relatively constant and shielding is relatively constant. So because atomic radius and shielding are relatively constant and the nuclear charge is increasing across the period because the proton number is increasing, the first ionization energy increases across the period. Obviously, because increased nuclear charge means greater force of attraction, so more energy needed to remove an electron. So the so in general, ionization energy increases across a period because because um, the nuclear charge increases while the, the atomic radius and shielding are relatively constant. However, we see exceptions over here. So from beryllium, beryllium to boron, the ionization energy decreases and from nitrogen to oxygen, the ionization energy increases. Now, we will need the help of orbitals to understand this concept. Now, if you look at beryllium, beryllium has four electrons in total. So it has 1s, we fill 2, then it is 2s, we fill 2. This is beryllium. And if you look at boron, 1s, we fill 2 electrons. Boron has 5 electrons in total. And then we have 2s, we fill 2 here as well. So we are left with 1, which will go into the into a 2p orbital. Yeah. So this is 2p. So you can see we have one electron over here. Now, uh, now this is boron. So if you see the the outermost electron in beryllium is in the 2s subshell. However, the outermost electron in boron is in the 2p subshell, and uh, you you know that the 2p subshell is further from the nucleus than the 2s subshell because the 2p subshell has more energy compared to the 2s subshell so because the 2p subshell has more energy uh, compared to the because the 2p subshell has more energy compared to the 2s subshell we need less energy to remove an electron from the 2p subshell compared to the 2s subshell and therefore it is easier to remove an electron from boron than to remove an electron from beryllium because it's easier to remove an electron from the 2p subshell than to remove an electron from the 2s subshell. So that is the difference between beryllium and boron. Now let's look at nitrogen and oxygen. So let's look at nitrogen and oxygen. Why is that an exception? So that has a completely different explanation. So if you look at nitrogen, it has seven electrons. One s, two s, two p. So first two go here, then two will go here, then one, two, and three. Seven electrons, yeah. But when you have oxygen, it has eight electrons. Now we have filled one in all of this, so now we can add another one here. So 1s, 2s, and 2p. So if you see in 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 nitrogen, in the 2p sub the, the, in, in both nitrogen and oxygen, the 2p subshell is the outermost subshell, so it cannot be a difference in energy. So in both nitrogen and oxygen, the 2p subshell is the outermost subshell, uh, but the 2p subshell uh, but each orbital of the 2p subshell of nitrogen has only one electron. However, one of the 2p orbitals of oxygen has two electrons. Now, 
these electrons you know they repel each other because like charges repel opposite charges attract so because these two electrons are in the same shell